Hello, my name is Jasmine Alexander. My profession is I'm an actress and Renaissance artist extraordinaire. What does that mean exactly? Well, let me break it down for you a little bit. I'm a triple threat actress, which back in the day meant I could sing, which is not only on stage, but studio as well. To chase I can dance and I can act. And with acting, I can do film, TV, stage, and even voice acting. I feel so out of control. Like I have no power over my destiny. Sure was a nice day though. The nowadays definition of triple threat and also where Renaissance artist extraordinaire comes in is I also write both scripts and novels. And also in the realm of writing, I write songs, poetry, sonnets, and what have you. Following up in that definition, I also direct. Which, aside from what most people think a director is, just sitting behind a big camera, I help figure out where the lighting goes. What the set looks like. what the wardrobe should look like, makeup, etc, etc. I also edit. I even edit on my phone. And lastly, in the film realm, I also produce, which includes the promotion, marketing, and distribution. It's a huge task, but I do it. I also illustrate, play music, piano, drums, guitar, and violin, though we'll say the last three are quite rusty, I do need to practice them, and I actually have made music on programs like Fruity Loops, I'm a fashion designer, I'm a photographer, I model, and I also make jewelry and sew on the side as a hobby, though I would say my sewing skills are quite impressive, if I don't say so myself. So with everything I've just named, I'm quite talented, we can definitely check that off the box, and honestly, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I've been this way ever since, god, as long as I can remember. If I didn't start with it right away, I picked it up along the way. To give you some history on my life, I was born in Seattle, Washington, then moved to a farm on the other side of the Puget Sound and lived there for most of my childhood life. In that time, I knew I was going to be an actress, hands down. And along the way, I picked up things like illustration, fashion design, singing, you name it. I've been a diehard actress since I was four. And at age five, when my brother started making video games, though I was in the middle of nowhere, I still decided to lend my voice talent to his project. So though still on a farm, I still try to apply myself as much as possible, acting as much as I could, singing, dancing, you name it. When we moved back to the city when I was eight, I then began photography and also directing. By then, I knew for a solid fact I was not only going to be an actress, but a director as well. And I've been making movies since. I then got my hands on editing and music making when I was 10. And then by 13, I started writing screenplays. And though I had already started writing before then, it wasn't until I was 13 that I really take writing seriously. I also started writing my first few books. Then I moved to Florida with my mom and my sister, and from then, I continued to flourish and create on my career. I got involved with the community, tried to do as many plays as possible, acted in many student films, even created my own films with my sister, continued to write music, play music, create music, illustrate fashion design, I did it all. But obviously, most people think if you're super talented, you don't go to Florida. So with all this talent, what's the one place people go to? Los Angeles, California, and there I went and I've been here for 10 years now. But just like Hollywood, it's called Tinseltown, which means it's fake. Over the years, I've seen quite a large exodus of people just leaving, and I thought, why are people leaving? Isn't this the place to be aside from New York and Chicago? But then I decided, you know what, let me actually look at the statistics instead of just hearing what people have to say. And though I stayed involved with the film industry out here and tried to do as much as I can, student films, independent films, I even got on TV. Yes, it was background, but still it was TV. I did what I could and I made 
bit of a name for myself. But even in these 10 years, I have not gotten to where I want to be. And that's what was starting to worry me. Why is it I have all this talent and people still don't know who I am? Meanwhile, people who have no talent are super famous. So that's when I decided to do the dig. And it wasn't until I was on a set with Disney when someone was actually blacklisted right in front of me did I realize the dark side of Hollywood. Just the statistics of California alone are alarming. Nearly 39 million people live in this state, yet 33% of them are homeless. All major metropolitan areas have the worst air quality in the nation. They say we live in paradise, but look around. Any major metropolitan area, we see trash, failing infrastructure. This is LA, everyone. And homelessness, as far as the eye can see. I'm sorry, there's so many streets I walk and it's just nothing but homeless tents and trash. Yet I'm paying so much for what? A third world country? I'm sorry, but we have a near 9% sales tax rate and over 13% in income tax, the highest in the nation. Yet where is all that money going? Not to mention the rise in crime, the lessening of penalties for misdemeanors and also armed robbery. And then just to make matters worse, now we have train theft. And aside from the high property taxes and the astronomical amount just to live here comfortably, the way this state is going, and I hate being political, but it's becoming socialist. It wasn't until I saw what Gavin Newsom was doing during the pandemic and the lockdown did I really, really start questioning what was really going on. And then him lessening penalties for sex predators and pedophiles and seeing that most of those people who were voting him back in the office or protecting him were in Hollywood, that's when I really needed to take a step back and think, what am I doing here? I myself am a victim of child rape and pedophilia. So why on God's green earth would I ever support an industry that caters to child pedophilia and molestation? You see, a lot of people don't know this. Hollywood started a little over 100 years ago. And though at the beginning it was great, it was moving out of vaudeville and making moving pictures. It was fascinating, it was new, it was magic. Realizing you can have so much power in this new magic, then we got things like communists involved. And unfortunately, though many will try to argue with me or beg to differ, it is still the case. That's why you see so much control over what's going on. And you think there's so many new ideas, there's so many stories to tell. Why are we seeing the same thing over and over and over again? Well, when you want to stay in control, what do you do? You keep things the same. And if you don't like new ideas, you get rid of them. Same thing happened in Russia. Stalin didn't really like his countrymen kind of going against him, so he got rid of 20 million of his own countrymen. History tends to repeat itself. So though a lot of people have this idea that the moguls are gone, unfortunately that's not true. And a lot of people think the casting couch thing isn't really a thing anymore because of the whole Me Too movement. Unfortunately, that's still not true. You heard of Harvey Weinstein, right? He was just one of them, and he was a sacrificial lamb. There are more. I don't know how many more, but there are more. You heard of the pedophile ring? And in order to stay in control and not be found out, you have to control the industry to make sure you stay on top. And then to make matters worse, you have a great idea, but then in order to get money, the executive producers give you stipulation money. Hey, we'll give you all this money if you do this. Now there's a lot of narrative pushing, agenda pushing, propaganda. That's communism. That's socialism. We all saw it happen in Nazi Germany. And guess what happened in Nazi Germany, aside from a horrible loss? Unfortunately, that's Hollywood. Need I say more? You get the picture. I digress. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. I really had to take another step back and think, what am I doing here? Really? 10 years and nothing. So I did the conspiracy theorist thing and researched. And out of my research, out of California, I found 13 filmmaking and acting hubs in North America alone. Out of these 13 filmmaking and acting hubs, two of them are in Canada. I'm not going to Canada. So where am I going to go to now? I already knew New York and Chicago were out. And though the idea of Atlanta was great because it's the fourth biggest hub in America, I knew my heart lied elsewhere. 
And because I'm a huge mountain girl, I knew I had to stay on the West Coast somewhere. But I'm like, I'm not staying in California and I'm not going to Portland, Oregon. Hell no. And then knowing the whole political thing with Disney and Netflix pulling out of Atlanta and going into Albuquerque, New Mexico and seeing Albuquerque, New Mexico is very much like what I'm seeing here in California. I can't go there either. So my two real options then were Austin, Texas or Park City, Utah. So though I love Texas, everything's bigger in Texas, I'm going to Park City, Utah. And you think, why Park City, Utah? You heard of the Sundance Film Festival, right? That's in Park City, Utah. And also they have great skiing and snowboarding. Lots of snow, lots of mountains. I'm going to Utah. <laughs> so that's all fine and groovy jazz, but uh, where is this going? Well, here. You see, most people want fame and fortune, fancy cars, a private jet, big mansions, their fourth yacht. And though I probably will come across these things along my way, that's not what I'm in this for. Otherwise, I would have sold my soul to the communistic, pedophile, Hollywood mogul regime and been famous a long time ago, and you would have seen my name on the big screen for the last 10 years. Honestly, if I never win an Oscar, a Grammy, a Tony, or an Emmy, I wouldn't care because that's not where my heart is. Plus, they're all so politicized now, chances are I probably would never win one. And though I try really hard to stay out of politics, Hollywood has a way of making you political. And unlike some artists, most artists want to share their creations with the world and generations to come. Not sitting on some lofty commie throne, making remake after remake, spin-off sequels until the cows turn blue. When's the last time we saw a film that really changed the culture? Really. Aside from James Cameron and Christopher Nolan, people aren't daring to make these movies anymore. And though Disney owns Star Wars, we don't really see Star Wars anymore. The ones that changed us, generations to come. We don't see Terminator anymore. We don't see Alien anymore. Hell, we don't even see all the horror classics that changed the industry. We don't even see The Matrix anymore. So who am I then in the grand scheme of things? Well, I'm not gonna say I'm the next Christopher Nolan or the James Cameron or what have you, or the next Meryl Streep, the next Kate Winslet. You get where I'm going. But what I will say is I strive to be someone of greatness. I want to make a name for myself. I may not be as big as these people, but I want my name to be there and people be like, yeah, that person did something awesome for the world. For example, ever notice though the movies look and sound amazing now, they're missing that magic? I notice it and a few still do. And that's what I want to bring back is that magic, that storytelling enchantment. It's always been one of my top goals is bring that magic back into filmmaking or acting or music or writing or poetry or dance, not just something that you gawk at. No, I want you to feel it. So many movies now I'll be watching, there's an impactful scene and I feel nothing. So for me as an artist, I want to do that for the world. I don't want to do it for me. I would know I've reached one of the peaks in my career if a fan comes up to me and says, by my acting or my directing or my music, what have you, it changed their life positively. I would rather have that than a little golden statue sitting on my shelf, just collecting dust. That to me would be the greatest gift in return. So how do you fit into all of this? In one of the most crucial ways. What a lot of people don't realize is being an artist is much like a startup company or being an entrepreneur. And it's no wonder you've heard false data like you can't make it as an artist, starving artist, you have to wait tables as an artist, you name it. And though Patreon is new, supporting an artist is not. Witness the great Italian Renaissance. Though the Medici's were quite questionable, you get the point. So how do you get involved? By making a monthly pledge of any one of my tiers, or even a one-time payment, not only would you be supporting me, thus generating the funding that will go into the goals I have posted, but you would then allow me to continue to create art to imbue the people around me and the world at large with entertainment, education, enlightenment, and lastly, enchantment. And depending on the tier you choose, or the one-time payment you make, it would then make either a small or a really big impact. So please, I humbly ask that you consider making a monthly donation and anything you've made thus far, I thoroughly appreciate. I thank you kindly for taking the time to listen to my story today, and I look forward to sharing my journey with you every step of the way. Bye for now.